Hi, uh, my name is Paolo Gaudenzi, I'm from Rome. I'm uh, with the University of Rome La Sapienza, where I'm a full professor of uh, aerospace structures. And also I am the director of the professional master in satellite system and services. Uh, also, same at the University of Rome La Sapienza, I, have, I am the coordinator of the PhD course in aeronautical and space engineering. My background in research starts from uh, uh, structures. Uh, I, I practiced a lot uh, computational mechanics, finite element techniques. Then I moved to composite materials, composite structures, and recently I entered the field of smart structures technology. Uh, while uh, being interested uh, in all those years in uh, uh, space systems and satellite systems as well. So my involvement in satellite system lasts uh, since. Uh, uh, 15 years and during all those years I've been uh, uh, working in, in the frame of uh, our professional master in satellites at La Sapienza and today I'd like to make you uh, a short introduction on satellite systems. Uh, my agenda for this talk uh, is first uh, considering a system view on space missions and all the engineering challenges that are related to the mission. Then I will shortly move to, to orbits and all the applications that we have for each orbit uh, around Earth and also for uh, uh, all the trajectories that uh, space system might have uh, leaving uh, uh, the, the Earth orbit and moving to uh, space systems in the solar system and even beyond it. Then we will uh, touch a little bit the space segment to, to see how a spacecraft is composed by bus, payload and subsystems and we will enter a little bit the configuration of a spacecraft. We will briefly touch ground and launch segment and then we will be discussing a little bit about applications and services not only of uh, uh, space uh, activities of today but also a little bit of space activity of tomorrow. So let us uh, start with uh, uh, talking a little bit about space missions and space systems. So performing a space mission is a real challenge. It's very difficult to reach an orbital position, very hard to leave our ground and to be stronger than uh, the force of gravity, leaving our uh, uh, level and reaching uh, the level of uh, an orbital position. So to go to space, we need first of all uh, a launch segment, meaning uh, uh, a launcher or a missile that is able to, to project our uh, spacecraft uh, into the right orbit. And the, the spacecraft will be the space segment of our mission. While on orbit, the satellite will perform its mission and will get in contact uh, uh, with us on ground by means of the ground segment. Uh, from which all the signal coming from the satellite will be received and the mission of the satellite will be finally performed. So to perform a space mission you need uh, a system that is uh, composed by three segments, the launch segment, the space segment and the ground segment as well. So a rather complicated uh, organization of things and phases and parts and there are a lot of engineering challenges uh, because space environment is very hostile. Not only difficult to be reached, but very hard because there is no protection from the atmosphere. So the, the rays from the sun are coming directly to the satellite. And in this empty space, you have no way of uh, uh, having an easy access to energy. So you have to capture the energy by the sun to provide the energy for your satellite. In the empty space, the satellite has to point Earth in order to have uh, uh, the uh, correct direction for the antenna and point the, the ground segment. And you, know, you, you need also to communicate with, with your uh, ground segment all the data that you are uh, capturing with your sensors and also to uh, 
inform your uh, ground-based systems uh, on how the system uh, is performing, on how the satellite is, uh, is working, if it is working properly or, or if there are some problems. So a, a really, really a complicated system. But there are a lot of engineering sciences and disciplines that are needed uh, to perform such a mission. First of all, you need to, to know about flight mechanics, uh, astrodynamics, meaning the trajectories that uh, our system should perform uh, in order to, uh, to perform its mission. Then, of course, before that even, uh, you need to, to do some uh, rocket science in order to have your missile, your launcher, uh, to project uh, our uh, satellites in the right orbit. Then you need some uh, uh, electrical engineering to provide the power that you need by means of uh, the solar uh, panels that will collect the energy from the sun and transform it in energy that could be used, first of all, for, for the payload uh, of our satellite that is to say, the, the ensemble of instruments that really provide the functionality to the mission. For instance, in a telecommunication satellite, the payload uh, will gather the signal from Earth stations and uh, project all the information in the area that uh, is covered by, by the satellite, meaning, for instance, that we are watching our TV, uh, Space TV channel and the satellite is providing us uh, either a movie or uh, a football match by means of the payload that is mounted on board the satellite. And this payload needs, of course, energy to transmit such signal. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the satellite needs also to have uh, a good pointing system. So there is a, a, a lot of uh, engineering science behind the attitude control system and trajectory control to assure that the position of the satellite is the proper one and the attitude, that is to say the position uh, in terms of uh, angular uh, pointing with respect to Earth is in the proper uh, uh, dimension, in, in the proper uh, situation. So in order to perform a space mission and to uh, construct a, a space uh, a system, you need a lot of competences, you need a lot of expertise that needs to, to be combined together for the functionality of all the parts uh, of, the, uh, of the spacecraft, of the uh, launching system uh, and of the ground segment as well. But why going to space? What are the reasons for performing a space mission? In the past uh, and uh, also nowadays, uh, the first impulse to go to, to space is to perform some uh, exploration activity or, or some science mission. This is maybe the first uh, idea that is related uh, to the tendency of, uh, of mankind to go beyond limits, to go beyond our horizon and to see what's, what's next, what's close to us uh, or even what's uh, what's in, in, in space, what's in the world, uh, uh, beyond our capability of, uh, of, uh, of looking, because beyond our capability of uh, looking around. So exploration and science is the first reason why to go for, uh, for uh, a space mission in space. Then there are, of course, a lot of uh, political or uh, military reasons to go there because, of course, uh, from space you really have the idea uh, of a global uh, view on our planet and a global view might be uh, geopolitical uh, control or having some uh, you know, access to information on a global, uh, from a global viewpoint and, of course, there are a lot of military applications that could be of interest. But apart from uh, science, apart from uh, uh, political reasons, uh, there are a lot of practical uh, reasons uh, for going to, to space. In fact, there are uh, a lot of applications and services that are really useful for uh, everybody, for, for the single citizen of our planet Earth, like the applications in, uh, in telecom. And everybody can experience uh, 
how important is having uh, uh, services like uh, uh, space television or space-based television. But now we experience also the, the importance of, ag of having uh, uh, navigation and positioning systems that are based on uh, uh, satellite assets. Furthermore, by means of Earth observation capability, we can provide uh, not only to, to the single citizen, but also to organizations, to governmental agencies, and to regional uh, governments, uh, a lot of information on the use of ground, on the evolution of climate, on the possible uh, uh, use and misuse of our ground. And these are all uh, applications that are very useful in practice. So space is important for science, for politics, but also for real life application for the benefit of everybody. So we might enter now uh, the topic of uh, uh, orbits, uh, meaning uh, where do we place such satellites and for which purposes? Of course, we, when we are talking about orbits, we think about something that's around Earth, while we can think, especially for exploration or science mission, to go beyond the Earth orbit and to visit other planets or other uh, natural satellites, or even going beyond our solar system. So there are a lot of missions that, are, uh, that have a trajectories or motion that are uh, really very far away from our Earth. But when we are talking about applications, uh, we might concentrate on, on orbits. And uh, maybe the most important kind of orbit uh, is the geostationary orbit. In this case, the satellite is uh, going on a circular path in the, in the plane of the equator. And the radius of this uh, uh, motion, uh, of this trajectory, of this orbit, uh, is around 36,000 kilometers. That means uh, uh, that the satellite is far away six times from the ground in terms of uh, the radius of Earth, that is approximately uh, 6,000 kilometers. So such satellites are very far away from, from ground. Why uh, placing uh, uh, satellites in such an orbit? Because the, the, the motion of a satellite on an orbit is related to its velocity. So the, la the satellite, to be stable on an orbit, uh, should have a certain velocity, by means of which, uh, and in terms of inertia forces uh, uh, produced by this velocity, the satellite is able to uh, balance uh, the uh, force of attraction due to gravity. So uh, for uh, that uh, level of uh, orbit at uh, 36,000 kilometers from Earth, the velocity of the satellites, uh, in terms of angular velocity, correspond exactly to the velocity of uh, the rotation of our Earth around its axis. This means that in a geostationary orbit, one satellite takes more or less one day to do a complete round. And since also the Earth is doing one round in one day, from Earth, we see that this satellite is fixed on, on the sky, like being a, a fixed star. So being a fixed point in, in, uh, in, the, in the sky can be used for uh, telecom uh, uh, applications, uh, since we can transmit to the satellite a certain signal, for instance, from a TV broadcasting station. And then from the satellite, the signal can be provided in a very large area by means of the reflection of this uh, uh, signal and reach each and every house or each and every uh, TV set on, on, on the area. So geostationary orbit is very, very important. And there are positions on geostationary orbit that are being assigned and uh, basically all over the Earth, all, all around this circle, there are a, a huge number of satellites 
operating by providing telecom, especially uh, TV broadcasting. But we have also applications uh, in which uh, other kind of orbits are, uh, are used. And we call them low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit have uh, a level between, uh, let's say, uh, around 400 kilometers up, up to maybe a few thousands kilometers. But the, the, the most of uh, satellites are flying around 600, 700 kilometers. In this case, Earth is, uh, the, the satellite is much closer to, to Earth. And we use this kind of orbit uh, especially for doing Earth observation. Uh, why this? Of course, if you like to, to make an observation of one thing, you like to be close and uh, to see all the details. But there is a major advantage to go away from your uh, target uh, because if you go away from the level of hurt, you uh, widen your horizon, you see more things at the same time. So the idea is to go up and up, reaching those levels in order to have a much larger portion of the hurt that, is, uh, that could be uh, seen from the satellite. Then you place on board the satellite some payload like a camera uh, based on uh, uh, you know, uh, classical optical uh, technology, or even you can place a radar, so another kind of sensor, in order to detect some information about uh, what's on the ground. So wha what is done is to do uh, remote observation. And by doing that, uh, by staying at this uh, level, you can have uh, access uh, uh, to many, many places around the Earth. Why the orbit is placed at uh, such an amount of kilometers? Wh why we are not going uh, a little bit uh, lower, like, like uh, let's say, 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers? Because at that level, uh, the atmosphere is still there, and so the satellite is not capable of working for long times, because there is some uh, a friction with the atmosphere, so the energy that is related to the motion of satellite will be somehow damped uh, by the interaction uh, uh, with, with the air, and uh, in very short time the satellite will, uh, uh, will diminish its uh, level and uh, eventually re-enter in, in the atmosphere and being destroyed. At that level, the velocity of the satellite will be much uh, higher than the, uh, the one of uh, uh, geostationary orbits. And so uh, instead of uh, taking uh, one entire day to do the complete round, uh, the complete round will be done uh, it's a, in a much shorter time, like, uh, for instance, uh, at around 500 kilometers in one hour and a half. So in one day, there, there will be many rounds uh, of the of the satellite on its orbit. Um, with this low Earth orbit uh, that are especially related uh, to Earth observation, but of course you can do a lot of uh, science application and some also meteo applications, meteorological applications are typically uh, run in geostationary orbit for uh, looking at a much wider uh, area of, uh, of the horizon. Uh, but one idea is to have uh, the plane uh, of, uh, of those orbits uh, uh, in, in such a way that the rotation uh, axis of the Earth uh, is included in this plane. By doing that, you might have this circular orbit of your satellites while the Earth is rotating below you. So the satellite will pass through different positions on Earth uh, while uh, the uh, evolution of its orbit is going on. And this is a classical uh, polar orbit that, uh, or some synchronous orbit by, by means uh, Earth observation applications are optimized uh, in such a way that you can see in, uh, in, in, in few hours or maybe in, in one day 
all the ground of the earth passing below you and so that you can take pictures of all of each and every place uh, on each and every spot uh, on the surface of, of the earth. So geostationary orbits and low earth orbits are very important. You have also other kinds of orbits like medium earth orbit that are the ones used by navigation satellites like GPS or the uh, forthcoming uh, uh, Galileo or uh, the, the Russian system GLONASS. And in that case, you are uh, in, a, in a middle level between low Earth orbit and geostationary geo orbits, and you are flying around something like 20,000 kilometers uh, in a circular orbit. In this case, for these applications, you need constellations of satellites, not just one satellite is enough. And uh, those navigation uh, applications are very important to us and are being uh, in, uh, in development for not only the, the existing system, but new systems and also the new generations for uh, uh, such applications that will provide us uh, a lot of important information about not only our position, but also on how we navigate and how all the uh, vehicles can, can uh, navigate and move uh, by means of such uh, satellite assets. There are also other kind of uh, orbits like uh, the Molnia orbit, so highly elliptical orbits. We, we were uh, talking uh, up to now with about uh, circular orbits, but there are also other applications uh, uh, and other orbits like uh, uh, the Molnia one. Those applications are related uh, to several uh, uh, circumstances, one of which is the capability of having a launch base that is capable of uh, launching only at a certain, uh, with, with some restriction on, on the, uh, uh, for the inclination of the orbital plane. And so those orbits are profiting uh, about certain characteristics uh, while uh, taking the, uh, the opportunity of being launched also uh, from uh, uh, bases that are not based on the equator. In fact, if you have a launch base on the equator, you are really free to launch or on for whatever orbital plane that you like. If you are not on the equator, you have some restriction. And Molnia orbits were, uh, uh, were used exactly uh, due to this uh, uh, limitation.